everybody. Hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. I made the cutest little phone case from Designs by Juju. This is really a very easy stitch out. This is not a hard thing to do at all and anybody can do it. You just have to follow step by step. The anatomy of it is it has a nice big flap that you can put a monogram on and I'm going to do that on the one I'm getting ready to make. Or you can do like I did and fussy cut fabric. This is some of that Tula pink fabric. The inside of it uses the same fabric as the outside and you don't have to but it's just a little bit easier for all the cutting. There are a lot of pieces to cut. I used a cam snap on the back of the bag is a zipper pouch and it has a separate fabric in the lining. This is very easy to do. Don't be freaked out by the zipper. It's real simple and I'll show you exactly how to do it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is determine the size that you need and you're going to want to measure your phone. The finished phone measurement sizes are on page five. They give the size right here. So we have one, one H, two, two H, and three, three H. I made 1H and I'm going to make another 1H today. When you get to the next page, this is a list of all of the fabric that you need and you're going to cut. This page right here, page 6, is in centimeters and this page right here is in inches. There are a lot of pieces to cut. You will not want to use batting in this at all. You're going to want to use flannel. And I used an old piece of flannel that I had. It is printed on one side and the other side is not. So this will be the side that I use that will be as close to the fabric as possible. You will not be able to use batting. I'm going to tell you that right now. Not so much when you're doing the stitch out, but when you go to turn it, the batting is just going to make everything just way too thick and it's not going to be able to turn. It's a quick stitch out. It has three separate hoopings and it's really easy to do. I'm going to walk you through all the steps. However, if you have severe arthritis and you are not able to turn something to get it through a small hole, if you still want to make it, you probably would want to get some help doing that. What I found easiest to do for me is everywhere on the fabric. These are my own notes that I did here. I lined through batting and I wrote flannel. That way I didn't get confused and that way I cut all my flannel pieces at one time first. Also, something to help keep you straight, highlight whatever size you're going to make. Use a highlighter and highlight the pieces that you want. That's also going to help you keep track of which one is which. And then down here for the lining, piece I, L, and O for me were all from the same fabric and then everything else was either flannel or the main fabric. You're definitely going to want to label each piece of the fabric that you cut. I used alpha bitties but you can use you know sticky notes or something like that whatever you want to make it easier for you to keep track of all of your pieces. For your stabilizer you're going to use no show mesh. You can use a light or a medium, either one, it doesn't matter. So now I'm going to go into Embrilliance and show you how I added the monogram to my phone case. Once you download the design files for the phone case, this is what you will have. Now you can see these images because I have a utility from Embrilliance on my system called Thumbnailer. And it allows you to see what each design file looks like. There are four design files for each size. And you can see here in the words, here is size one, part one, size one, part two, size one, part three, crossbody, and size one, part three, strap. You will choose part one, part two, and then decide whether you want the crossbody or the wrist strap. Now I am making size 1H, so there is size 1H, and here is 2, and so on. I need size 1H part 1, I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller by clicking up here in this box, and I'm going to send the design wirelessly to my brother Luminaire by grabbing it and just dragging it into Embrilliance. Once that's in there, all I need to do is go utility, send to Solaris XP1. XP1 is the Brother Luminaire. And I'm going to call it 1H 
dash one, tell it OK. The file has been sent to the machine. OK, I'm going to highlight it and hit delete on my keyboard. I want to put a monogram on this, so I'm going to grab size 1H part 2 and drag it into in brilliance. Minimize this. And if you want to put a monogram on it, click on it. And over here in the objects panel, let's take a look at the anatomy of this particular design. So there is the placement line, there is your cross hatching. And that is the last stitch that stitches on the, the back part of the flap. What I want to do is I'm going to come up here and click the A, which opens up the ability to add letters down here in the properties. I'm going to use DBJJ's Queen Xylophia. You can choose lots of different fonts. Look at all the fonts I have of hers. It's the uh, two inch is what that is. And I just want the B, so I'm going to highlight the text, all of the text in the text box, and I'm going to just do a capital B and hit enter, and it changes right there. So I know there's going to be a little cam snap right here, so I'm going to raise this up just a little bit, and I think that that is fine. I'm going to control A to select all and center in the hoop. And that looks good. So what I need to do now is highlight this last stitch right here. And not on the words, but over here, this is an image of what the stitch is. Grab a hold of that image and drag it and hover it over the B. And that will put the B above that last stitch. So now you can tell when it stitches out, it's going to do the placement line it's going to do the cross hatching, it's going to do the letter B, and then it's going to do the final stitch. And that's perfect. And now I want to bring in part three, the cross body strap. That's what I want. And so I'm just going to drag this into Embrilliance. Embrilliance is a wonderful third party software. It works with all brands of machines. It does not install on your machine, it installs on your computer and it lets you play with embroidery designs. It's so easy to use. The reason there is a difference for the crossbody versus the wrist strap is that there are placement lines on here. This is all I need to do with this. If you do not have wireless capability on your machine, then you'll put a USB drive into your computer and you'll say file, save stitch file as, and you want to save it in your USB drive. Make sure that the design file you choose is compatible with your machine. So since mine is a brother, I'm going to use PES. And then you can take the USB to your machine. If you do not use Embrilliance, what you can do is hold down the control key on your keyboard or command if it's a Mac and grab each piece that you need and click it. So I need size 1H part 1. 1H part 2 and 1H part 3 crossbody. Those are the three files I want. And let go of the control key so that make sure all three of them are highlighted, or you can do them one at a time. You're just going to grab them with your mouse and drag them over to the USB drive and let go. And they will copy over there. To make the strap and figure out how long you need that to be, there are measurements that are provided in the instructions, but to customize it for you so that you know it'll fit you or it'll fit whoever you're making it for, get yourself your measuring tape and just wrap it around your body, right or left, however you want it, and measure like this and figure out where you want it to be, okay? So I want mine to hang right about here, doesn't matter, and whatever number that comes to, add four inches. That four inches is going to allow you an extra two inches on each end to fold them in and make a nice clean finish on the ends inside of the D-rings. To make this project, you're going to need a hoop that's large enough for your fabric and three pieces of poly mesh stabilizer. And then all of your pieces will be cut out. These are alpha bitties. I'll link to all this stuff below. They're very, very handy to keep track of everything that you need. So you're going to want to pre-cut 
all of your fabric ahead of time and get everything set out the way you need it. You're going to need a zipper that's long enough. My zipper needs to be five and a half inches and this is seven so it's perfect. You're going to want a pair of curved embroidery scissors to be able to cut things in the hoop. You're going to want some D-rings. You're going to want some tape. This is 3M tape. I'll link to it below. It's very inexpensive. You can get 12 rolls for less than $10. This is by 3M and I really like this tape. It's not too sticky and it holds great. You're going to probably want a stiletto. This is a beautiful stiletto that is handcrafted by my husband and this helps to get the straps nice and straight underneath your presser foot. You're going to need extra fabric for your strap and flannel for inside the strap. These two little pieces right here are for the, the loops that go through the D-ring and you're going to want a firm surface if you need to take your hoop out and do any kind of trimming at all. To sew the strips together for your strap, you're going to want to put them right sides facing and place them at a 90 degree angle and then you're going to sew from V to V on a diagonal. Once you get done, you pull the strip, fold it so it's right side up and keep it straight and then put the next one. That'll give me a long enough strip for what I need for my crossbody. And now repeat the same with the flannel that's going to be inside of the strip. For the pieces that will go in the D-ring, fold them in half to create a center crease and then fold each edge into that crease and that will give you a nice finished edge and that's what you want. We're going to go make loops. From here we're going to fold these together like this. So you're going to have a tiny little strip like that and you want to sew an eighth of an inch from the edge on both sides. Making sure that the raw edges are tucked inside. To make the strap for the cross body, trim apart your strips and trim your cross where they cross over to a quarter inch. To keep bulk down, I recommend pressing these seams open on both the fabric and the flannel. Now you want to lay your strip out face down and I'm going to put my flannel so that they are wrong sides together. And you're going to do the exact same thing that you did with the little loop pieces. You're going to fold it in half, create a crease, and then come back and fold your edges in so that they meet and your raw edges will be hidden inside of the strap. Then you want to do the same thing with the strap. Fold it in half and close those raw edges and stitch down both sides at an eighth of an inch. You might want to use some clips to hold this together. So now it's time to get to the fun part, the embroidery. This piece is really, really simple. And the first thing that the machine is gonna do is stitch down an outline to show you exactly where you need to place your fabrics. And it's real simple to do. And then you're gonna to wanna to take both A and B. And A is a piece of fabric and B is a piece of flannel. And you're gonna to wanna to put them together and then lay them together on top over the placement stitches and then stitch it all down. So let's get started. On the luminaire from the main screen, I'm gonna to touch embroidery, and I'm gonna to go to the pocket for memory. I sent this over wirelessly, and I am looking for 1H1. And I get a notice that it doesn't include enough thread information. That's fine. We have the thread information we need in our instructions. One of the really nice things about this design is that you really don't need a whole lot of different thread changes. So I'm gonna tell it set and embroidery, and we're ready to go. I'm using a light gray thread, it's isocord. It's kinda of hard for you to see. I'm using an Organ 7511 needle, and I have a regular 90 weight bobbin. Then you want to put your flannel and your fabric together and lay them out so that you have about a half an inch 
on either side of the stitch line from side to side and about half an inch from the top and bottom and just make sure everything is covered if you are using a directional fabric you'll want to pay attention to that and when you're making this you'll always be looking at the fabric as so that the head is up here and the foot is down here and if you have fussy cut it you may want to fold it in half and place it at the halfway point on the lines just to make sure you get everything straight to make sure it doesn't shift at all since we have two pieces the instructions don't tell you but I'm going to put a piece of tape down here at the top and another piece of tape at the bottom and I'm not going to pull it but I'm going to smooth it and just put it like that this stitch will tack it down and do the cross hatching now you want to take piece C and place it face down on top of the fabrics and make sure all the stitching is covered and then you're ready to go and that's it we're all done with the first hooping see how simple that was now the instructions tell you to take it out of the hoop and trim it for the sake of brevity for the video I'm going to do all of the trimming at one time time to hoop another piece of stabilizer Okay, so we just finished part one. I'm going to tell it OK, return, delete. OK to delete? Yep. All right, I'm going to go to the pocket. Wireless, there it is right there with my B on it. I'm going to tell it set, embroidery, and we are ready to go. So you want to put your flannel and your fabric and cover the thread by a half inch on either side even amounts and make sure that it is covered at the bottom and at the top and again just to be safe I'm going to use a piece of tape to hold these two fabrics down so they don't shift if it was just one piece I probably wouldn't bother but better safe than sorry now it's going to tack this down and do a cross stitch I put the tails together and do a loop and just do a single knot. That's all you need to do. And then pull it through at the needle. I'm gonna go ahead and tuck this in that thread guide. It just makes me happier to do that. And then it's that simple to change the threads. I'm going to cut my thread up at the top and re-thread it again with the light gray and I'm going to use fabric piece F and I'm going to put it face down. Now let's go cut out these first two hoopings and turn them. I like to use a clover point to point turning tool is the best thing. I'm going to trim everything with a quarter inch seam. The top I'm actually going to trim right at the edge of the fabric. And I'm going to take my scissors and trim the corners and round them. And then a little garment sewing trick on these. Go ahead and cut some V's. Cut two but not through the stitches. That will keep it nice and flat inside and reduce the bulk. Sometimes your, your sewing skills cross over. They come in pretty handy. If you accidentally cut, if you're doing this and you accidentally cut through it, you didn't ruin the project, just take it to your sewing machine and stitch. It'll be okay. And then turn this. I'm going to take the rounded end and I'm going to push it on the corners and bring it up. That gives you a nice, look at how pretty those corners are. I'll put a link to this below. Very nice. That turned out real, real pretty. Oh, look how pretty that is. Okay, time to do the other one too. And trim it a 45 in those corners to reduce bulk. Let's go to the ironing board and press all this down. 
when you press, you're going to want to press so that the lining piece does not show from the front. So it helps to kind of pull it. Okay, how's that look? Pretty good. I like it. We're going to set these aside now. Let's go hoop piece number three. Okay, we're about ready to start the third hooping. The first two were pretty simple and pretty straightforward. But this third one really has a lot of intricate different pieces to it. You just have to follow step by step. I have changed my thread color to a black so that you can see the outline of the uh, zipper placement and all that. We're going to do the zipper first. Again, don't freak out. If you've never installed a zipper before, you can do this. It's very easy to do. So let's get started. I'm going to remove the hoop from the machine and I'm going to set my hoop so that it looks right facing you. This is the top and here is the bottom. You want to take your zipper right side up and put the head of it in your left hand and then just place it right between where the zipper tab is. You want this on your left side. Again, I have this facing you. If this was facing me, it'd be in my left hand, but it's upside down to me. So just set it so that the zipper tab is on the outside and the little metal stop is on the other side. That's all you need to do. And you want to take a piece of tape and you just want to put it so that it's between those two lines. You definitely only want a polyester zipper. No metal zippers. If you use a metal zipper, you'll break a needle and mess up your machine. You also want a standard zipper. Do not use an invisible zipper. All done, you've installed the zipper. How easy was that? Now you're gonna remove the hoop from the machine and flip it over to the back. So here's my zipper right side up. I'm gonna flip the hoop over to the back and you're gonna grab fabric piece I right side down and you want to align it with the top edge of the zipper. Put your fabric, give it about a half an inch on either side, align it with the top edge of the zipper and then take tape and tape it down on the sides outside of the stitch line. You don't want that to flip up. That's fabric piece I, right side down, aligned with the top edge of the zipper. Flip your hoop back over and you want to take fabric piece G, line it with the top edge of the zipper. You want about a half an inch over either side of the placement lines and align it with the top edge of the zipper and then the next stitch is going to secure both of these together. Remove the hoop from the machine, flip it over, pull up this fabric. You can remove this tape if you want. You want to remove the tape and take this lining piece and pull it up to the top. Crease it a little bit with your fingers. And take a piece of tape and stick it so it stays. And then flip this over. You want to take flannel piece H, put it right against that stitch line right there. Even it up on the sides. Pull this up and crease it. Put your hoop back in the machine and it's going to stitch out the cross hatching. Next, we're gonna do the exact same thing, but for the bottom half of the project. Remove your hoop from the machine. You want to take fabric piece L right side down and align it with the bottom edge of the zipper, about half an inch over on either side. And you're gonna to wanna to take some tape and tape this 
up so that it doesn't get flopped over and caught up underneath. Turn your hoop back over and you want to take fabric piece J. You want it right side down and align it with the bottom edge of the zipper. Get that tab out of the way. Make it all line up right. And the next stitch is going to stitch all of the fabric down. Remove your hoop from the machine. Take the tape off. Don't worry if you get fraying on these edges because you're gonna cut all that off anyway when it's time to be finished. You're gonna pull this down like this and kind of crease it and take a piece of tape and tape the bottom edge to hold it in place so it looks like that flip it back over you want to take fabric piece K which is flannel just like we did before I'm going to place it light side up right along this stitch line that was just made and fold this over going to use a piece of tape to hold everything down and then the cross hatching stitches are going to be made on the bottom half of the case. The next stitch is a placement line. To make this easier for you to see, this placement line that just happened, it went over, up, over all the way down and over so here are the placement lines on the right and left side of your project and then there is a center line right here that center line is very helpful for placing the next piece before you do anything before you put the tabs on take your zipper and open it a little bit more than halfway. If you don't do that, you're gonna be sorry and you won't be able to use your project. Now you wanna take your tabs. I'm gonna put the bottom edge of the fabric, center it on that mark, and I'm gonna place it fabric edge even with the fabric edge of this piece. And I'm gonna take a big piece of tape and tape the whole thing down. You don't want that D ring wiggling around at all and cause a problem if it gets hit by the needle. So I'm gonna take this one, there's my mark big long piece of tape and hold it down. You want to take the piece that you had from the first hooping. You want cross hatch side down so that the plain, the uncross hatch side is face up to you. And you want to put the open end of this at the bottom of the project. You can see these two lines, these two marks right here on the side. Fold your project in half and center it with that center mark and then open it up These marks on the right and left side do not be above those. Take your hoop out of the machine. Now what you want to do is get your flat piece. I'm going to flip it over. You need cross hatching side down. And I'm going to take a little ruler and just slip it inside and it makes life really easy. And you want to slip it into the pocket flap and you need about three quarters of an inch sticking out. Looks fairly even. Again, cross hatch side down, 
stick it in make sure it's nice and flat in there and three quarters of an inch sticking out you want to take fabric piece M and put it over the entire project put it over your bottom line of stitching about half an inch and then you want to take flannel your batting piece and I'm gonna put the right side the light side facing the top fabric so that you can't see the print through it the next stitch is going to secure the whole thing you might want to slow your machine down or raise your presser foot to make sure that nothing gets snagged or caught and remove your hoop from the machine one last time and you want to take fabric piece O and you want to cover the edge stitches by about half an inch make sure everything is covered and go ahead and tape this on each end and this will make sure everything stays in place and do one final stitch we're all finished time to turn it okay you want to trim everything at about a quarter of an inch except on the back where the opening is to turn I'm not going to trim that at a quarter of an inch just yet I'm going to do the other three sides first you can actually see it better from the back the final stitch I'm using my 60 millimeter blade on my rotary cutter it's a little bit easier it goes through that thickness a lot better than the 45 And the bottom, I'm going to cut it at the bottom edge of the last piece of fabric we put on. Okay. Now, I, I'm not going to hand stitch this. I am going to use a piece of stitch witchery to close this up. I'm going to cut these corners out of 45. You guys can see there's so much bulk in here. Okay, now comes the hard part. Turn it. I'm going to use stitch witchery and I'm going to close up this opening right here. I just get myself a piece of stitch witchery. You, you're, the directions say to hand stitch this. You guys know I don't do that. I'm going to use some glass head pins. They can withstand the heat of the iron. And I'm going to pin this to hold it in place. This is fiddly, you guys. Everything looks like it's going to go together fine. That'll hold just fine. That's a permanent seal. That's not going to go anywhere. It's not like steam -a seam It's designed to be permanent. That'll work. All right, now you need to get this zipper open as best you can and then flip it one more time. That looks adorable. Everything's all sealed up permanently down inside. There's the pocket. My phone fits right in there. I need to put on a cam snap and then put on my crossbody strap. Okay, we're all done. Man, that was a job. <laughs> Here it is, you guys. Oh, it just turned out so, so nice. I really like it. Everything works just wonderful. There's my big old phone. I hope you enjoyed this. If you liked it, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more tutorials. We'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.